Feeding you good, isn't she? She's trying. <laughs> yeah, she, she's a good cook. <laughs> All right, so this is Nana's house here. Spent a lot of time growing up here, and even when I wasn't living here, I was here a lot. This is home to me. When I say I'm coming home, this is it. Y'all like hamburgers? Oh, yeah. Everybody likes hamburgers. <laughs> you your mayonnaise up top, don't you? Yes. Nana's the best cook. This side of the Mississippi. And heck, the other side, too. Well, I've been putting stuff together for your yard. Oh, yeah? I don't know what kind of weeds, weeds you've got, but we'll get it fixed. Yeah. So I, I put sod down for my boys so that they could have a yard to play in. And These are just little thin. I mean, they're not big at all. They're just little thin cartridges that come up. He's like me in a lot of ways. He, he hones in on something, and he's just obsessive about it. Does it squirt like that? Yeah. Rain bird? That's the system. So uh, my grandfather's just <laughs> a yard nut. That's nut sage. There's some weeds here. I don't know crap about yards. I mean, I know a little bit, but not, not like he does. That? Yeah, I think so. That's a clover. So he's trying to help me get it, get it tidied up. When he come to live here permanently, he was 13. Mm -hmm. We ended up putting him in Silverdale Baptist Academy. Uh, after my dad passed, there were some kind of crazy times uh, the next year or so, and then I decided I wanted to move here um, and just live here. So I moved here for a couple of years, went to school. He just loved his daddy. So Jerry told him that um, there was a bad accident and his dad was in a car wreck and he, you know, he didn't make it, he, he died. Of course, Mitchell fell apart. We all fell apart, you know, because of him. So uh, it was just a sad day. Mitch was a good kid. He was a very, very good kid when he was young. When he first come to live here though, he had some discipline problems and I think his grandmother straightened those out. He was just mischievous, just like any other boy, you know. He could, he did what he could get away with when he was little. Growing up, you know, just with my buddies and raising too much hell and, you know, trying to, just trying to chase girls and praying one of them liked you, you know, it's just like the good times, right? They were never overbearing, they just let me kind of do my thing, but they let me know if I was doing something that wasn't right, and it's just, it was a good, easy place to grow up. He, he, he got me a few times, but only one time where he about threatened to kill me. <laughs> I, I was scared to death, so I didn't do it anymore. And in high school, he did good with his studies. He played basketball, he played football, and he played golf. What did you think when his music career started happening? I was excited for him, yeah. He used to play out in our garage when he first started um, putting it on YouTube. My family all told me I was great, but I kind of I kind of knew that that was rigged, you know. Everybody's family thinks they're great, so I was like, let me, uh, let me just put it out for the world to decide. Lord, what do they think? And the more he sang, the more he played, the better he got. And his songwriting is great. Even in, in high school, uh, that was his favorite thing to do, was write. English was his favorite subject. His father always wanted him to play a guitar. So he bought him a guitar, and I think he played that guitar more than he studied. He came back home, finished school at UTC, and headed to Nashville. Oh my gosh, I cried. <laughs> uh, I still remember, but You know, they have to grow up, but you don't want to lose them, you know, but they've got a life of their own, so you just, you know, you have to let go. Yeah. 
Any last words you'd like to say? Give them hell, Midge. <laughs>